Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, we are back. Uh, uh, if, if you've been following this vein of the, the day on the technology track, uh, you will have been watching a number of talks all about experience design and the user usability issues that surround the blockchain uh, or, or Web3 more broadly. Um, so this is a talk uh, talking a bit more about how can we guide mass adoption uh, through, as, as uh, we're going to find out, uh, gaming and gamification. So uh, without any further ado, I'm really keen to welcome our, our speaker, uh, William Wu, um, to join us on the stage. And William is the CEO of Cathion Gaming. Uh, there we go, I see you. Uh, and I, how are you doing, William? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really well, thank you. Uh, I hear you as well, and I see, I see and hear you, which is wonderful. Um, and just before I pass the reins over to William, a reminder to everyone here, there is a Q&A tab on the right-hand side. It's really important that you use it. Uh, not only are you incentivized to do so because you'll get points for our leaderboard, uh, but more so, we want to have a really engaged two-way conversation around these talks. So ask your questions. If you don't have a question, vote the one that, you, that most resonates with you, and we'll be sure to ask that to William at the end. Um, so, yeah, William, uh, handing the, the mic over to you now, uh, and I'll get out your way. Um, looking forward to this presentation. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Really, um, th thanks a lot for sharing. I'm just going to try sharing my screen. Um, hopefully, everyone can see my screen now. Um, I won't try to... Uh, increase it because um, uh, I don't want any technical issues happening right now. But look, I'm really what I really wanted to talk today about was a little bit about blockchain gaming um, and, you know, why it's here today. Uh, talk a little bit about why I'm so excited and I, why I think it's such a great, I guess, uh, almost like a precursor of what's going to happen in the next few years of blockchain gaming. I'll talk a little bit about Cathion Gaming, which is the company that I'm running um, and that I have a lot of uh, great members helping me build out a, a specific, very specific dream that I'll talk about. Um, and then just really talk about how we work and how we can partner up with people and what we're looking for um, just across the board. So um, just to start off with, um, I, I think a lot of the audience has heard a lot about the uh, uh, web free and different applications. So specifically, I want to talk about uh, blockchain gaming and what, what blockchain and gaming is and why it's so important. We know that the traditional gaming market is a market that's very, very vast. There's you know, almost billions of players. Um, it's a multi-trillion dollar market, right? And what really excites me about what's happening right now is that the entire, to me, the entire blockchain uh, uh, traditional gaming market is currently being disrupted. So uh, blockchain gaming has, uh, we're probably in about month five or month six of the disruption. Um, to me, this is probably uh, the very early stages of what will be a three to four year trend. And what's really exciting to me is the, 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 the possibilities that a blockchain game has over traditional gaming. Now, to me, there's three main components, right? The number one component is the fact that people can now actually earn money while they're playing games. That's never generally happened before. Um, and the few games that have come out have shown that, number one, when you can earn, let's say, in some countries, right, somewhere between two to three times the average wage of the country just by playing a game, it's hugely, it's a huge driver of uh, human behavior. Right. And so what you have right now is in a lot of countries, such as the Philippines, right, being a prime example, uh, people that play the game, they discover that it's a huge world, right? You've got 15, 16 year olds, more money than their parents ever have. And then they suddenly tell their, you know, their whole the relatives, they tell the person on the bus stop, they tell the uh, bus driver themselves. And suddenly you've got millions of players that never would have touched a game now suddenly pulling up the game and starting to play it. That to me is really exciting because not only will it introduce a huge new audience of gamers, but number two, right? if you think about it, the ability to play games and actually have value in what you actually create means that someone in, for example, let's say, uh, you know, let's say Kenya, right? Um, they can actually, 
you know, they they can they they go and spend a lot of time, level the character to level 60. They might not have a lot of money, but they have time. And they can now sell their character who's level 60 to someone in the US who may have a bit of money, but doesn't have that time, but wants to play the game for the entertainment value, right? So there's an unlock of the ability to earn and with that, the ability to actually transfer time in a, in, in a form of value. Uh, number two, there's you can actually own assets. And so the ability to own your equipment or your weapon or your NFT in which you've played and spent a lot of time and then always independently sell it uh, on an independent market for a particular price. Uh, that to me is very, very strong. Historically, you know, there, there hasn't been the ability to actually sell assets. But generally, you've been limited because uh, you've, you've only been able to sell it on a sort of like a black market and there's a risk of you being hacked and so forth. And then thirdly, I think what blockchain gaming opens up to is this whole wild concept of what they call the metaverse, right? So um, the fact that, number one, those assets that you own or the equipment that you own or the character that you can own, you can actually port it to other games you can unlock connectivity with other games that have never been able to be done before. And then ultimately where I see this whole thing going is that there will be communities where people can log in. Um, let's say, for example, let's say there's a game called Soul Chicks, right? You can log in, you can uh, talk to the guys in your team, you can talk to the guys in your family, you can build your own house on your piece of Soul Chick land. And then after you build the house, you can store your equipment, your avatars, and your NFTs within that house. And then once you're pretty, you know, you've designed the house and it looks very nice, you can actually go to the local market, the local community, and then play trivia night with the guys around you. That is something that's never ever done, been done before. Um, there's a lot of players looking into it. And I think, you know, whilst it's probably about five to 10 years away, because there's a bit of a technology solution uh, that needs to be sort of built. Um, it just really unlocks or showcases the potential of blockchain gaming. So a lot of different changes. Um, I think, you know, what's very interesting, a lot of uh, big traditional gaming companies are already looking into this, right? So, you know, Epic Games, EA, Ubisoft, all looking through the space. Now, they haven't, you know, as you know, um, and, and, and as history will show, uh, the very big companies will take an interest. They'll take some time to ramp up. They'll have board approval processes and they'll have, uh, you know, very lengthy budget approval processes. And whilst they might come in, it may take somewhere between, you know, 12 months, 24 months before they actually start making an impact. And so what that means to me is it's a very exciting period right now, right? Right now, if you're a player and you have a game out and it's a play blockchain game and you can actually unleash it, right? You can uh, you can realize a lot of advantages that you can't realize with a uh, traditional game. And some of those advantages are the fact that you can get really great valuation for a game title that you normally wouldn't be able to get. Some of that uh, advantage is the fact that you would be able to get a lot of users. Some of the games, for example, that have come out in the last month have man managed to accumulate 10 million users within a single month, which is just phenomenal, right? And some of the advantages being that right now in the market, there's less competition. And so uh, if you are a player out here, you can still uh, gain a lot of traction even without not having, it, despite not having the quality or the same level of dedication or graphics that a traditional game might have. And a really, really great example of that is Axie. Axie's, you know, a great, you know, it, it's built by a great team. Um, it came to the market first, uh, were the first to the market. But the game itself, when you look at it, it's not that fun to play with, right? Um, there's a lot of players. So they've managed to get something like 2 million players within uh, a, a few months, uh, and they at, at one point they were listed at a forty million dollar, uh, forty billion dollar market cap on a diluted basis. Pretty incredible, right? But the game is turn by turn based. It's a it's a pretty simple game in terms of the graphics, 
and still you know it doesn't have the same entertainment value that a really really good game that we know from traditional market the type of like the the, the dotas or the league of legends um has right and so to me that's the opportunity today that exists uh right now but potentially not down six months down the track so um right now you know i i, I think there has been a lot of blockchain games but the same entertainment value isn't quite there. And so that's what we set out to, you know, Cathy on Gaming set out to try to create. So Cathy on Gaming is the fastest growing play to an integrated blockchain gaming and entertainment value. We have two organic titles sitting beneath. One of them is Soul Chicks. The other one is Soul Stars. Uh, Soul Chicks is uh, essentially our version of uh, Diablo combined with uh, League of Legends put on the blockchain and then soul stars is think of it as what we have done here is we've partnered with a korean k-pop agency to create the first world's first ever sing to earn karaoke game so think of like going to karaoke with your friends but now you can actually earn money while you're playing the game um so those are two organic titles that we have developed within 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 the atmosphere so you know, I think the great thing about Cathion Gaming, right, is we have developed a very, very specific skill set of knowing how to create games and bring them onto the blockchain and provide the only integrated end-to-end -end solution, right? So we take an existing game or we create our own game. We build the blockchain integration components of it. Now that might inter involve NFT integration, that might involve play to earn integration that might involve to token creation and integration. We then publish that in the sense that we market that to crypto audiences or play to earn audiences. And we use our vast array of partnerships to drive a lot of community building and marketing building that would otherwise happen. And then thirdly, we fundraise. So we, we, we have a huge extensive range of KOLs and crypto VC firms and launch sites that we would introduce titles that we have uh, that, that that come to us and partner with us and uh, want to be on the blockchain. I think um, I'll just probably skip to here. You know, one thing that, uh, you know, what we do very well is uh, we are very, we are probably the fastest company out there in the market, right? So Soul Chicks is our flagship title. We achieved ranked number one play to earn on Slana within three months overtaking a number of competitors that have been developing for 12 months plus we raised over 55 million dollars for soul chicks our public raise was done at a 500 million valuation for a three-month-old company and we built a team including our community managers and our marketing team of over 150 people within just four months of starting we created a demo within four months uh, four weeks of launching right so traditional gaming usually to create a demo it would take them three to four months plus right we were we were able to do that in less than 20 percent of the time and then when we look at our marketing and the uh, and the engagement that we were able to drive soul chicks we grew by over five times from somewhere between uh 20 around 20,000 twitter followers to over 200,000 follow uh followers within around 14 days so phenomenal success right and the quest, there's a big question on why we why we can do that. The main reason is because we have a world class team, right? So if you look at our team, we have a now team that's over 150 people. Uh, it's divided roughly into three components. So number one, you've got an amazing business team, right, within our team, right? So um, a lot of our team went to world class institutions such as McKinsey, um, Capital, really, really great. Uh, business uh, execution uh, backgrounds where they've learned how to build a business in a very short time, short period of time, how to scale it very, very quickly, and then how to get it to a world class uh, level within a very short period of time. We then have what are called a world class, uh, world class game industry veterans. So if you look at our team, right, a lot of the team that has come from really world-class uh, gaming studios or uh, worked on game uh, world-class gaming titles such as Nexon, the guys that who created uh, Maple Story, 
PUBG, Dungeon Fighter, Blizzard, World of Warcraft 3, uh, Dota 2, uh, Counter-Strike, right? And so when you combine the top tier business background with a world-class game industry, and then you also combine us with a very, very strong community that we've built from the ground up, it gives you a really, really dedicated team that's very passionate and is able to create results that none of our competitors in the market are able to do so. So we have a very international team. We have a very comprehensive team. We have a lot of experience within blockchain. We have a lot of experience with gaming. And the market. Um, and, and, and they're probably what I'll say here is, you know, we, we have a lot of partnerships here. Uh, I'll probably just skip through this, right? Um, and, and, and go to it. I think where we are today is um, Soul Chicks is, do, uh, is our flagship title. It's doing, uh, you know, we're, we're very uh, spending a lot of time on building the fundamentals. And so what that means for us is, number one, we're spending a lot of time getting the best game that we can actually build, bring to the market uh, with our alpha that's expected to come out to the market within in, in around March or April. Um, we will actually have, uh, we've spent a lot of time in the last couple of weeks really building up the capabilities of the team. And actually what will be quite interesting is we'll come out with a release into the market in the next few weeks about just the caliber of the team that we're building here. And it's just incredible. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's really great people um, from really world-class institutions. Uh, and, then, and then finally, you know, we're spending a lot of time uh, getting the right people and building the right community uh, within Solchix. And what we're trying to do now is we're trying to drive a lot of synergies between Solchix and other titles. So, you know, overall, I would, you know, I think that a very interesting thing to say is I think blockchain gaming is here to stay. I think the fact that you can actually earn money while you play games is an incredible human driver. I think Cathy on Gaming, we're trying to be the forefront of this, uh, essentially this revolution. And we're trying to bring what's never been done before to an industry that's very, very fast moving and essentially accelerate what will be a three year, four year growth into hopefully the next couple of months. Um, you know, I think uh, I'll, I'll probably pause there <laughs> and uh, just probably answer a few questions just because we've gone through it. Hey, William, I uh, really love that presentation. It's, it's great to see uh, see this place around economy really starting to grow and thrive. And, and, and the role of blockchain is is, is really, it's, 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 it's going to hopefully dominate this space uh, for the future and, and mean that people, uh, you know, through blockchain and NFTs are able to kind of actually own assets and have like, you know, tradable, tangible things in gaming environments that aren't belonging to the, the monopoly. Um, how do you, um, we've got a number of questions here, um, but I, I wanted to sort of just uh, understand a quick question that comes up when, because we're planning a blockchain gaming conference. For anyone here interested, later this year, we'll be running a conference dedicated to, well, we're going to call it, whether, I'm an R and this comes to my question, about whether we call it blockchain gaming or blockchain and gaming. Because there's two worlds and, and some, some gamers are advocates for blockchain and, and NFTs coming into this space and, and others not so much. And so where do you, how do we convince gamers that this is a, going to be a value addition to their connected gaming environment and not something in the way of their experience or, or their experience of gaming? Yeah, so it's, it, it's a good question. Look, I think traditional gaming players, you know, the reality is no uh, blockchain game right now has tar uh, successfully penetrated the markets of the, you know, the US, Korea, Japan, right, the UK, where traditional gaming uh, gamers are actually mostly located in terms of revenue spent. I think that to me is an opportunity right now. And so what we'll see over time, right, the reason they haven't, no, I think there's twofold. Number one, there's very few publishers, traditional gaming publishers that have published a Tradition, uh, uh, blockchain game because the quality hasn't been there yet, but it will be there. And then number two, uh, the entertainment value to date has not been there. Even if you look at the best play to earn games right now, if you play them, usually you'll be pretty bored within 10 minutes. Yeah. So that those will change. 
um, I'm very confident that over the next few months, or let's call it three months or six months, that 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 type of change will actually happen. And so uh, there's going to be a lot of first move advantage to the company who is able to act, take advantage of that quickly. I think the second thing to um, I, I think your question right is, look, I would say um, uh, for those gamers. Uh, the market is still new right now. Um, we there's still a bit of a what I would call an education period, right? Um, in order for people who, for example, they have sort of have to download a wallet. Uh, now, even though you know nowadays you can actually get fiat ramp up pretty quickly, but there's a bit of an education process to blockchain. Now we've seen in economies such as the Philippines, people are able to get across that uh, educational barrier pretty easily. And I'm very confident as blockchain comes up, right, and, and it evolves, that education process will be relatively little, be little, and people will start to learn how to do it. Um, so to me, it, it, it will come. And I would say, you know, I, I think in my mind, it's almost inevitable. It's great that, you know, there are some crypto audiences that invest into blockchain games. But the reality is that blockchain gaming is going to disrupt the traditional gaming market, irrespective of where the crypto market is. So even if blockchain, uh, even if Bitcoin crashes, or if you think about it, right, if there's two games that are exactly the same, but one game you can, you know, you can't earn money and you don't own your assets, but one game you earn, uh, have your assets and you actually, you know, yeah. can earn money, people will flock to the game where you can actually earn money. So it's a trend that will happen irrespective of where the uh, Bitcoin price is in the next three to six months. So I'm very confident it will happen. It's just a matter of time. The quality quite isn't right there in the market, but you know, companies such as Cathion, we're trying to push that barrier, right? To really, you know, uh, narrow the gap between the quality of games and the entertainment value of games between blockchain games and traditional gaming. And on that then, I mean, like when we think about uh, Web3 more broadly and obviously the spatial web and the metaverse and gaming within these, these ecosystems, um, we talk about things like portability of assets from games and and actually being able to interrupt with other platforms again. Is this something you plan for through Cathion or is it uh, and, and how do you also plan concurrently with like issues of scalability as well? Like once once people do flock to this space, what happens then? Uh, how do we ensure we can kind of get everyone into the same ecosystems? Yeah, so the great thing is when you're building a platform such as Cathion, right, our ambition is to be, you know, the steam of blockchain, right? So that's that's the goal. Now, when you have multiple game titles, the great thing is just like Steam, right? You have an audience, you introduce other games to them, and then they, you know, when you're playing, you know, Soul Chicks, for example, and you suddenly see on the screen, hey, you know, there's an opportunity to play a sync to own a game. Maybe I'll just try it for one time just like how you will do it in normal Steam, right? You can see that, you know, you can actually introduce an audience across to multiple game titles very quickly. So there is that ability to scale very quickly, especially once you hit a certain critical mass. So our goal is to get to that critical mass as soon as possible and then bring those synergies to, to play. We will have within Cathion, we will, what we're trying to build is essentially, we call it the Cathion Passport, right? You have an NFT in Soul Chicks, but you can actually bring that NFT to Soul Stars and any of our other games that we actually have in the pipeline. And then we can actually play the game, same game, and you can use it almost like an entrance pass. And then, you know, we're building like very close connectivity between games to the point where, you know, you can look at the game, your friends who are playing Soul Chicks and you can actually invite them to get a high score within uh, Soul Stars. So we're building that uh, connectivity, that connectivity you know, is actually, uh, you know, it, it's not difficult technology. It takes some time for people to adapt to it, but it's proven technology. And when you actually have blockchain where, you know, you can actually see people's results and see, see people's progress over time, you know, I think uh, that, that that mission almost becomes very easy. Well, let's build a couple of these questions from the audience as well. Thanks very much for that answer. Um, one come the first, the most upvoted comes from Golden um who's asking how do we handle the current limitations of blockchain technology particularly with reference to scaling which also talked about or just kind of alluded to including high transaction fees and slow speed of transaction in the gaming industry yeah 
It's a, it's a really good question. Look, I, I think the answer is, number one, you look at the blockchains that are most reliable and that have the lowest latency and the most capacity. Now, obviously, blockchain you know, itself right, is improving every single day, right? And we're seeing a lot more you know, improvements around, across the board, not only you know, in, in the form of new competitors, but existing players who are up, uh, upgrading the capabilities. So number one, the blockchains themselves will improve over time, right? Number two, I think the, 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 the trick is, you're right, we can't put all of the data within a game on the blockchain. Right now, you know, just by uh, just by virtue of how much data we can actually put through, it's largely limited to, for example, wallet transactions and NFT transactions. The great thing I think is, you know, as technology improves and as people get more on board and as you know uh, the the capacity of certain blockchains improve, you'll be able to improve that over time. Now, you know, the interesting thing is that even though you can't put a whole game onto the blockchain and every single data flow on a blockchain, you can still, there's still play to earn models that do exist and they actually work very well today. So for us, you know, where we see this, uh, how this is this evolving is right now, we can use the blockchain to put on critical data and uh, use that to, you know, uh, really, really start the whole process uh, and prove out the use case, right? Over time in about, uh, you know, somewhere between, uh, 15 to, uh, I would say, two to three years time, you would see a lot of huge improvement in the blockchain capabilities and capacity, right? And that what that will mean is that, you know, a lot more data will be able to put, be put on the blockchain. And I would not be not surprised with the ability to scale blockchain and uh, transactional data. Uh, eventually, you'll be able to put the whole game onto blockchain. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> we'll get there, you know, slow and steady. Um, the, the next question was from, from Hussein, who was asking about NFTs and integrating them into Web3 gaming. You mentioned the passport. Is, it, was that, is that an NFT? Is that how that would, would work? Uh, or how do you think about NFTs and integration? Yeah, so, the, I mean, most companies right now, right, the way they're doing it is they're creating NFTs and tokens on a game title basis. So, you know, like every single game you'll see, Axie is a great example, right? NFTs are Axie specific, right? The token is uh, Axie specific. What will eventually happen is that we will start to see NFTs that can be played across a whole bunch of games. Now, that hasn't happened, right? And so, you know, our goal for Cathion is to be one of the first players to actually be able, able to do that. We're building a portfolio right now of very, very different games where we can actually start porting those NFTs into the various games so um eventually there will be nfts where the portability between games is very easy obviously it's much easier to do that when you have a portfolio that you you know that sit within a holding company where there's synergies that can be driven right you know and and and, and the whole company is very incentivized to create a uh, you know called a called, you know a cathy on passport um so uh, i the way i see it is that you know the first uh uh, NFT passports that will be created will be game studio specific or game publisher specific. But over time, they will start, you know, publishers will start talking to the, each other and you'll be able to port from, you know, let's Steam to, you know, Apple Store and Apple Store to Google Store, etc. But that's probably, you know, probably a 12 month, uh, 12 month window. Uh, 12 months, uh, it's not that far away, you know, in this, in, in this industry, though, things do change day by day. Um, <laughs> uh, so, there's a, a last question I'd like to finish on because uh, we, we are somewhat over time, but it was really interesting and I enjoyed it. So here we are. <laughs> uh, it's comes from Luke uh, and he's asking, how long do you think it will take, talking about time, to transition from play to earn to just more of a, a widespread sort of play and earn? So it kind of yeah. stops becoming set front and center uh, of the conversation. Yeah, so it's a really good question. Look, I would say... Um, the, the 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 i mean play to uh play and earn the key requirement is that the game itself has good entertainment value now uh obviously you know when you think about good games with good entertainment value it does range a bit um so you have very very hyper casual games which i would expect probably comes to market within the next couple of months uh you know or next three months right and you know that goes all the way up to very complicated games you know, RPG type games, MOBA type games, like uh, what we're trying to do at Soul Chicks. 
you know, that to, the, Soul Cheeks by itself, we have probably, in my mind, the best team in the whole world to create it. But even then, you know, there's a nine month lead period until it's actually completed. And realistically, you know, if it was a another team trying to create it, that would be somewhere between 18 months to three years trying to create that type of game. So um, the way I think about it is, you know, I think hyper casual games will probably somewhere be somewhere between three to six months. The very, very good games, um, you know, AA quality, triple A quality uh, with a bit of complexity, that's probably, you know, 12 months to uh, 24 months away. Uh, it will happen, uh, but there's a very, very, you know, there's a bit of a time lag until that actually happens. And so, you know, what we're trying to do at the Cathion is, you know, we're trying to bring games, traditional games that have that uh, uh, quality where, um, you know, there's a, there's a big audience that, uh, or, or a, a big development team that has spent two, three years developing the game. And then we want to skip that entire block, uh, development process and bring them to blockchain game immediately. So we're, you know, we're partnering up with a number of game studios at the moment, right? Uh, to literally do that process. And so we're really hoping that we'll be able to accelerate what might be a 12 month lead period to something more like six or, you know, six or four months, uh, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah. And I, I, that was going to be my final wrap up was just like, how, what is going to be the, the nudge to get powerhouses that aren't necessarily on the blockchain chain, like the epics and the blizzards and Activision to start moving in that direction but you kind of alluded to kind of these conversations i imagine are happening right they're just behind the scenes yeah for now look um, I, I would say that every large company is looking into the space right now every single large company is very very aware of it now the issue is they don't always have the blockchain uh, knowledge they don't know how to do blockchain integration they don't know how to do nfts they don't know how to market to a blockchain audience which is very different from marketing to traditional gaming audience they don't know how you know they don't have connections within uh, uh investors who are crypto familiar and you know willing to invest in crypto day number one and so you know there is a bit of a time lag in a lead in a learning curve um you know I, I i do think they will probably come in but uh you know for us you know what we're trying to do is really accelerate those part uh that 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 transition and so for us, you know, we want to partner up with the teams who have that amazing game, right? That might not have made it in traditional gaming because of some various reason. You know, for example, they might have been too slow to market. And by the time they create, finish the game, there was already a very, very strong dominant player. We want to partner up with those guys and bring those concepts to the blockchain and be the first to uh, uh, blockchain. You know, like uh, I'll give you a great example. We're, we're just in the process of partnering up with a team who created you know a game it's like angry birds but pvp right okay. amazing game they spent three four years creating the game but you know the reality is by the time they actually went to launch it you know the the, the market was dominated by uh, angry birds and here's an opportunity to bring the angry birds or, or create the new angry birds of blockchain gaming so we're partnering up with them right and over the next um two two months right we'll be able to bring that to a huge play to earn audience, a huge blockchain audience, and, you know, really, really accelerate that in a very short period of time. So that's our goal at Cathy on Gaming. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm very, you know, happy or, or proud that we'll be able to give a lot of companies that might not have the opportunity to do so within traditional gaming, a real opportunity to be the first mover within blockchain gaming. Well, all speed to you i'm really excited for this uh you know and if you haven't checked out soul chicks head over there go check them out um the yeah the, there's a blockchain gaming conference coming we'll be running one i'm sure other people are, are contemplating but join us for that event uh where we, hopefully we'll be welcoming william and others back to talk about this um this very very growing and emerging and and full of potential area um so yeah william thanks so much for sharing your insights uh, a big virtual round of applause from me I know all of our audience here. Um, and yeah, uh, we'll look forward to seeing having you back in the future. Uh, any last Thank closing you. statement at all from your side? No, look, look, this is a month, a month five or six of what will be a three, four year journey. You know, the my team, you know, we, we, we have really, really passionate guys and, you know, people who are very, really, uh, you know, uh, they, they want to see change in this industry, right? I, I, I think the change will come. 
we're very, very well positioned to make that change. And I hope that over the next 12 to 24 months, um, you know, the whole world be, will be able to see the power of blockchain gaming. I'm a huge believer. And, uh, you know, thank you everyone for listening today. Thank you. And to everyone who, who joined and shared some of those awesome questions. Sorry we didn't get to them all. There were tons there. Um, but we'll try and get those over to William anyway. Uh, post event so you can at least have a read and maybe respond through some social channels maybe so um a real pleasure we have one more session going on right now but uh in 10 minutes time we're going to have a break uh anyway so um head over to listen to uh kieran from tune technology talking about the elaspos essentials wallet uh and then otherwise have a lovely break we'll see you in the networking area bye everyone yeah thank you guys